Welcome to the Happy Tans Podcast, where you will learn everything you need to know about running a successful sunless tanning business. We will interview some of the industry's top business owners to find out how they took a passion and turned it into a prosperous business. And here's your host, Grant Conscious. Hello, Happy Tanners. Thank you for joining us today on today's episode. I have the pleasure of interviewing Haley Staples. She is a former salon owner in Orange County, California. Haley, how are you doing today? Oh, I'm well. Thank you. Thank you for having me. My pleasure. I'm, I'm so glad that you come on today. You're a longtime friend. I met you uh, a few years ago <laughs> via the phone at Choli, so <laughs> it's nice yes. to talk to you again. Um, if you want Thank to you. give us a little background, I know you're in a little different situation since you no longer are technically in the business. Uh, I know you're still kind of involved, but if you want to give a little background and share uh, about the business that you used to own or anything that you want to rev- uh, tell us. Sure. Great. Yeah, I started um, my spray tanning journey in Orange County, California, like you mentioned, and that was in 2010. And I started out mobile, which seems to be pretty common in the industry. I I quickly found out that I wanted to be in some type of brick and mortar situation. So I was able to rent a room in an established waxing salon, and I built up my clientele from there. About nine months after renting a room in a waxing salon, um, I decided to open my own salon where I had multiple rooms, um, and I did that until late 2014 when I sold my business, and I sold my business because I was moving from California to Austin, Texas. That's great. Austin's a beautiful place. I've visited there a couple of times, so I'm sure that you love that. I do. <laughs> I do. To, it's great. Yeah, if you have to leave uh, sunny Southern California, I guess that's one place it's good to go. So yes. no uh, snow, so yeah. that's good. <laughs> yeah, no snow. Yeah, that's definitely good. Uh, yeah, that's a good intro. And like you mentioned, the mobile mobile two salon is very common. Actually, the first two guests, Kelly and Andressa, had the same uh, path. So it seems to be a common uh, common denominator there. Um, so in your entrepreneurial uh, venture there with your your tanning business, I know there's it's like a roller coaster, as, as everybody will attest to. There's a lot of ups and a lots of downs. So I kind of want to touch on both both points there. So if you could tell us like a worst entrepreneurial moment that you had in your business? Is there something in particular that comes to mind? Yeah, that's a, that's a good question. Um, I think that the thing that I struggled with the most was the down season and especially my first down season. So it seems like in the spray tanning industry, there is this down season, winter time, where just not as many clients are going to come in wanting a spray tan. And I feel that because I, I did not connect enough with the spray tanning community. So I was not connected enough to the online spray tanning community, to the local spray tanning community. And so I felt that, oh my gosh, I am the only one experiencing this. I'm the only one going through this slow down season. And I really let it discourage me. Once I was in business for multiple years and I decided to become more connected with the spray tanning community, I was like, okay, this is normal. I would have really benefited from knowing this my first, my first season um, of experience it, experiencing it being slow. Um, so I would say that was probably one of the, the worst times that I went through with my business. Um, on the flip side, I would say one of the best um, experiences that I had um, with my spray tanning salon was when I was running full capacity. I had all of my rooms filled. I had multiple employees working for me. And just knowing that it was like my hard work and dedication to my business that created this reality for me. There was no other feeling like it. Um, I would say also, though, one thing to mention where I felt it was just a great experience for me was when I really got connected with other complimentary businesses. So it was working with the waxing salons and the hair salons, building those relationships. I just felt like I was on, on top of the world because I was getting all of these referrals and business was great. That's great. And, and you, uh, you shared a comment, another common thing, which is the ups and downs it has a lot to do with the season and tanning. And like you said, the community, if you were more, you know, in with the community online or wherever locally, 
you would you would hear that from other people and might not get quite as discouraged. And I'm obviously a huge proponent of community. I think it's great. I think it helps people push each other and really help each other. Ultimately, that's how we that's how we work as human beings. So I think that's a huge thing. Um, and something you touched on there, the dedication and hard work. And I love the quote that says, luck looks a lot like hard work because a lot of people would look at you and say, Haley, you're so lucky. Look at your business. And I like, it almost makes me cringe to hear that when people say you're so lucky. Um, just because like, you know, that it wasn't luck. It was the hard, it was the 18 hour days. It was the, the, you know, blood, sweat and tears seven days a week, you know, all the way to the wall going as hard as you can to get there. Uh, and that work is, you know, that hard work is what led you to be successful. It had nothing to do with luck. Granted, you might get a couple lucky breaks here and there, um, and things like that, but those, those opportunities come because of the hard work. So thank you so much for sharing that, that, uh, the dedication and hard work is, is always important. Yes, absolutely. Um, and you did mention, um, you know, about the, the change at, you said full capacity and multiple employees. So, so something that a lot of people want to know is like, what changes were made and, and yours are going to be different from a lot of people are running, you know, single person. They don't have multiple employees. But what changes did you make, you know, daily, weekly, monthly, yearly as the business grew from you were probably at one point working in and on the business in the same capacity. And then at some point it transitioned to where, hey, I'm managing these people versus actually hands on. How did that look for you? And like, what was that adjustment like? Yeah, so I, I think I realized um, pretty early on that I could be more successful. I could be running my, seeing more clients, running my business more effectively if I brought in others to help me so that I wasn't seeing 25 clients a day myself and being burned out. Um, so I I, I realized that I, my business was not going to grow the way that I wanted it to unless I brought other people in to help me. So, and I started small with that. It was bringing in one employee, getting her trained, getting her up to speed. Okay, let's see how this goes. And then it was, okay, we're, we're running with the two of us. Things are good. Well, no, we can actually see more clients. There's, there's more demand. Um, for our services. So then I brought in my second employee. And from there, I just had to um, slowly bring in one employee after the next, spending time with them, though, to get them up to speed to ensure that they were doing um, the spray tans to the to the extent that I would do them, providing the level of quality. Um, so I continued to have to you know, reassess things like, okay, how is this employee doing? How is that employee doing? So weekly I was doing that. Monthly I was doing that. Um, and I feel that really just taking the time to grow my employees is what led to a lot of success because I knew I could do the spray tanning myself. I could provide the customer service myself, but I was not going to be able to grow my business until I kind of let go of having to do all of the hands-on and brought in employees to help me. Right. Yeah. And I want to applaud you for that, Haley, because there's a couple of things that I would applaud you for. One is letting go. That's really, really difficult for people to do because um, to some extent, I think that people feel like, well, one, you don't know if they're going to care at the same level as you do. And secondly, it's like, uh, some people probably get this feeling that like nobody can do this, you know, the same way I do or something. But if you train the people and empower them, and I think you really actually care about them and and uh, share that same feeling with them, then they will follow you. And secondly, I applaud you because it is very hard. I've managed people before. That's very difficult. So you obviously had some uh, success with that as your business continued to grow. So that that does take a, a, a lot of hard work and a completely different level of work or different type of work than doing all the, you know, spraying and stuff yourself like you were when you first started out. Yes, absolutely. It does. And and I think a key to growing your business and bringing in those employees and and I think this is going to go for working with with any in any business working with any employees is just having that direct, honest, open communication. So if there are issues that arise, maybe a client's not satisfied with a spray tan, it was never like, oh, I'm just going to brush that under the rug and I'm not going to address it with my employee. It was immediately addressing it and let's talk through the situation 
instead of just okay let's just let's just kind of overlook that and hopefully it won't happen again and I feel that I did that and I had to really force myself to do that because that's not always a comfortable situation but it led to some great success with my employees yeah and I'd imagine from the employee's standpoint they think like oh wow she's not gonna like reprimand me like usual I'm not gonna get written up she actually supports me she wants me to do well we want the business to do well. So that, yeah, that was a, a very good call on your, uh, your part. I saw a lot of managers when I used to manage uh, people that would take the other route and like, Hey, I'm going to write you up if you don't do this rather than, Hey, why are you struggling with this? What happened? Let's, let's see what we can do to fix this. So it doesn't happen again. And that's, exactly. uh, and that's something you have to learn. So that's another reason that you did, uh, did very well with that. So you, you obviously did, you'd had a lot of success going from the mobile to the salon, uh, not only going from the mobile to the salon like we see a lot of people, but you also added employees and full capacity, like you said. So if you could pinpoint one thing as the number one thing that you did and did very well that contributed to your success, what would you say that was? Gosh, you know, I I feel like it's probably customer service. And I know that a lot of companies say that they give great customer service. But what I feel like... I really did and also was able to get my employees to do was really focus on their customer service. It was about, I mean, people are coming in and they are, they are going to be very vulnerable getting a spray tan. You know, they are disrobing. Um, that is not the most comfortable situation to be in. So it was about being warm and having great communication with the clients, paying great attention to detail, answering all of their questions. And um, I, there were multiple clients that would give reviews. Um, so, for example, Yelp reviews. And that is what they loved about the salon, that we were so warm, we were so caring, we made them feel so comfortable, we paid so much attention to detail. And I, I, that's absolutely important. And that led to great success for the salon. So I would say that it was, um, it was those things as well as professionally handling situations that arose with unhappy clients, because of course, though great customer service was given and spray tans were given from myself or well-trained employees, not every spray tan turned out perfect. And it was the way that those situations were handled that made a huge difference as well. I can remember um, a client who received a spray tan at my salon and she was not satisfied the next day. And because I was, I'm the owner, I was the one often dealing with the clients that were unhappy. So it was about bringing this client back in, satisfying the issues that arose correcting the issues that happened in her spray tan and from that she gave us a five-star Yelp review so she came back to us to fix a problem and in turn gave us a five-star Yelp review on our great customer service <clears throat> on how wonderful small businesses are if I would have handled that situation differently and placed blame on her because a lot of blame I mean honestly you know, it could have been something she was responsible for. So I could have turned around and blamed her for it. She would not have given us the five-star Yelp review. So I, I think it was also just the way that we handled issues that arose because they will arise. Yeah, that customer service is huge. We know that this is a customer service-based business. Uh, the way you handle that was sounds exceptional. And a lot of people get caught up in that uh, that thing where, like, like I've heard it. I've heard them be called, and I don't agree with the way it sounds. But demon customers are the people that are like are <laughs> gonna automatically yes. complain about it. But like somebody said, and it made a lot of sense. Is like you might get caught up in thinking that a lot of customers are that, but you don't want to mistake and make a mistake in the one customer that, that actually had a bad experience, and then you say, "Oh, they're just like these other people," and dismiss that. And that that just looks terrible for your business. And the customer service goes a very, very, very long way. And that ultimately, I think, is what sets up people for success in this business and any other i think uh, you know being honest and taking care of your customers if you do those two things then you will be successful because 99 percent of people are not going to do that so that'll definitely set you apart it sounds like you had a great reputation for that and you really were on top of that with your uh, employees as well so uh, that that was um, definitely something that's i'm sure helped to grow your business tremendously 
Yes, absolutely. Yeah, so I know that you don't spray anymore, so these questions are a little uh, maybe different for you, but back when you did, uh, what type of equipment and solution did you use? Yeah, so when I started out and I was doing mobile, I started out with the Mini Mist, which I still have that machine to this day. I love that machine, and especially mobile because it is so lightweight, just easy to, you know, pack in your suitcase that you're taking to your client's location. Once I moved into, you know, having multiple service rooms, I upgraded the machine, but always kept that as a backup. Um, and I moved to the, I think it's the Apollo Pro Mist. Whisper I Mist? Was it the big with, one? Mi- Yes. Yeah, maybe yeah. no, 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 no. Not maybe not the whisper mist. It was smaller than that because oh, I put mist. it in its own sun, sun mist. mist. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Okay. And I actually was buying those machines through Show Lee, but I think that or maybe I bought one through Apollo. I'm not sure. But I used um a Show Lee machine as well that was very similar mm-hmm. um to the Apollo product that I was using. So I I used I used those. I when I first started out I was using the plastic gun that came with the mini mist machine which was fine for me and then as I learned more about spray tanning I realized the difference that I saw by using a ceramic gun and that I feel like there's just a big difference in the two Um, so I loved using the ceramic gun and the way that they would spray and the mist was just so much more fine that would come out and I felt like I had more control so I moved to um, the ceramic guns for all of the um, service rooms that I had. And then for solutions, um, I used, because I always wanted to have a backup for people. So maybe if they were allergic to an ingredient that, that was in one solution, I could always, I had a backup of a solution. But primarily I used Show Lee and um, I had a backup of Norvell. Okay. Yeah, that's great. I, I I knew those answers. I knew <laughs> I had a little insider information there. Uh-huh. I remember the Apollo, um, and Sholee resold the Apollo. So I know you. I'm pretty sure you bought one uh, of those when I was there as well. Um, and just to touch yes, on that, okay. the the ceramic versus the plastic and the better control. I see a lot of people who like want to get uh, in, in the best thing to start out with. I don't necessarily think that's uh, always true. I think even just getting started, like the Apollo 300, like 320 bucks for the mini mess, and you can use that for so long until you get good enough. And then the ceramic gives you more control. But I think a lot of people jump in and automatically they're like, bam, I learned how to spray tan. Now I want to be able to contour. I want to do this, this and that. But you learn it from experience. I think it, I think you need to ease into it. Do you agree with that? I, I absolutely agree because you can get very overwhelmed, um, not only with what you need to learn, but the cost then that could be associated if you are, you know, oh my gosh, I have to have the, the best machine. I have to have the best uh, ceramic gun. I used my plastic gun and my mini mist <clears throat> machine for a, a solid year before I ever upgraded. And I didn't know the difference of using a ceramic gun. So the plastic gun was perfect and I was able to grow my business enough that I needed to open my own salon. So um I, I I absolutely agree. Start out with something small, something reasonable, get your feet wet and then you can figure out what it is that really works for you. And when you're making money then you can invest a little bit more money in your business. Right. Reinvest that back. It's like a, Yeah. You learn that as a business owner too. You're like, Oh, I made, you know, a hundred bucks. No, actually eighty of that's going back to the business and twenty of that goes to me. So. Right. <laughs> You so definitely true. learn that. You definitely learn that. But, um, <laughs> yes. you know, you got to put in the effort to get there. So you know that as well as anyone. Uh, and before you started out, did you go through any training or certification yourself or did you just kind of jump in and learn it uh, on your own? Yeah, you know, I, I'm the type of person that I felt more comfortable going through a certification class. Um, and and I, I really benefited from doing that. I wanted to have not only the training. So I learned the technique, but just that gave me the confidence to be like, okay, like I know, I know what I'm doing now. And I feel like it's, I feel like going through a certification training is great for anybody that's starting. There's so many hurdles that you will not have to go through if you participate in a certification course. Um, And especially if the person who's doing your training or the company that's offering your training, if they are going to be available to you after the fact to answer questions, to give you additional information, not just somebody who's going to teach you technique and then kind of leave you high and dry on your own, because I don't feel like that's enough. So I I did the certification and I feel like I benefited from it tremendously. Yeah, essentially, I like to tell people, 
you're basically like when you do certifications and training, you're basically paying to learn from the mistakes of others, right? They've learned this stuff yes. through trial and error, and that way you don't have to go through that. So hey, I'll pay for that every day. <laughs> yes, absolutely. That's great. It, yeah, mm-hmm. saved yeah. me a lot. Yeah, I'm sure it did. Um, and so hey, I want to go ahead and jump into the last thing. I love this question, uh, and I think it it helps a lot of people get a better perspective. If you could write a letter to yourself when you were just starting out, what would you say? Oh, geez. Uh, such a good question. I would say <clears throat> hold steady, be patient, learn from your mistakes, be open to learning from others, use your community, so your spray tan community, reach out to them, make those connections with them, and um, use your downtime effectively because you're going to have that downtime Um Use it to do all the things that you didn't have time for before. So that is working on your advertising, working on your website, on your forms, working on going out and making connections with the other complementary businesses. Um, Use that downtime. And honestly, I would also have told myself to be proud of what I did because there are so many people that they want to venture out. They want to do something on their own, but for one reason or another, and most of it being fear, they choose not to go out and start something on their own. And oh my gosh, we have gone Mm -hmm. out and decided to do something on our own. And I want to tell myself to be so proud of that, and I would tell anybody listening to this to be so proud of themselves for taking that leap. It takes so much courage to do that, and be proud of yourself. Yeah, th- those are such great points. I don't even want to tarnish that in any way. You hit on every single thing that I like to tell people. Uh, I love the fact that you said, you know, that that uh, you know, be proud of yourself for things. I think that a lot of people get caught up by like the, the uh, fear, one thing, and secondly something that people call the imposter syndrome, like why why can I be successful? Like when you look at other people, it's easy to say, oh, wow, look at Haley, she did this, she did that. Like instead of saying like, oh, what's, you know, what's, a, what's different? Obviously, like you put in the work and stuff, but people don't need to get caught up in like somebody that's successful is so special. Everybody is a human being. Like you could be as successful as you want to be, and usually we're our worst enemy. Um, and in between our ears is our worst enemy. So oh, you have yes. to get over that. And that's, you shared a lot of good things, the patience, the hard work, using your downtime beneficial, you know, to the business. Don't just sit there and dwell on it. Don't go read the forums and say, Oh, what new solution can I use? Because this is going to change my business. Like customers don't care. They want a good spray tan. They don't care if you're using ABC solution. It doesn't matter. Like they just want somebody that cares, somebody that takes care of them, good customer service, and ultimately makes them feel beautiful. So thank you so much for sharing that, Haley, and everything else has been uh, a ton of golden information in this, and I hope everybody gets as much out of it as uh, as I have. So thank you so much for your time and for sharing all that information with the community. Thank you so much, Grant. Hello, happy tanners and the happy tanning community. Thank you so much for joining me on today's episode with Haley. Haley is a good friend of mine. I met her back when I used to work at Sholey Sunless, and we used to talk all the time on the phone. I always looked up to her and respected her and her business. She was a, a really good uh, person, always talked to, and was always in such a good mood. I think she really showed that throughout the podcast and shared so much good information about the customer service and the training and everything that goes into it, the community. Uh, and as you know, I'm a huge proponent of the community. If we all work together, everyone will be successful. That is how we are built as human beings. That's how we're hardwired. So thank you so much again for joining us. Thank you again, Haley, for coming on. If anyone has any questions or any feedback, my name is Grant. You can find me at happytans.com, grant at happytans.com, or just come to the website, drop me a line. I'll be happy to answer any questions you have, any feedback as always. I'm always open to it. Thank you again and have a wonderful day.